In early April, two of the world's most popular sports entertainment companies announced a merger. World Wrestling Entertainment, also known as WWE, and the Ultimate Fighting Championship, also known as the UFC, will become a single company, whose name is not yet decided. Right now, it's simply going by the working title, New Company. How impressively creative. The deal was reported as an acquisition with Endeavor Group Holdings, a multi-billion dollar talent and media agency leading the charge. Endeavor already owns the UFC, and in this new deal, they will now own 51% controlling interest in the new company. WWE shareholders will hold the remaining 49%. The merger is part of Endeavor's plan to acquire, then consolidate major sports entertainment brands into one group. They also own the professional bull riders and several minor league baseball teams. In 2022, they sold 10 of them to Silver Lake, a company that owns 69% of Endeavor itself. Sounds a lot like moving money from your left pocket to your right one. The combined revenue of both the WWE and the UFC was $2.4 billion in 2022, representing a 10% annual growth rate since 2019. The UFC is the more valuable brand, with WWE only exceeding $1 billion in annual revenue for the first time in 2021 despite being the older company. The transaction valued the WWE at $9.3 billion and the UFC at $12.1 billion. That leaves the combined new company with a valuation of just over $21 billion. The genesis of this merger can be traced to 2022, and it involved a good old-fashioned boardroom drama. If you keep up with the news, you'll remember that Vince McMahon was forced out as CEO and board chairman of the WWE in July of 2022. He had run the company since 1982, when he took over from his father, Vince Sr. Until this merger, the company had been in the McMahon family for over 70 years. Officially, he retired after being at the helm for decades. He posted on Twitter saying, quote, At 77, time for me to retire. Thank you, WWE Universe. Then, now, forever, together. End quote. But in reality, it was revealed that the board was not too happy with reports that McMahon had made hush payments to multiple women. Wonder where he got that from? The board had uncovered non-disclosure agreements involving claims of misconduct against Mr. McMahon going back years. He was accused of spending millions of company funds to pay multiple women in order to cover up infidelity and allegations of sexual misconduct. The board's investigation began based on a $3 million payment he made to a departing employee with whom he allegedly had an affair with. But that quickly uncovered more hush payments made to other former female WWE employees by McMahon and John Laurinaitis, the head of talent relations at the WWE. Following the probe, Vince McMahon agreed to reimburse the company $17.4 million. WWE's reported financial statements for the years 2019, 2020, and 2021, and the first quarter of 2022 also had to be revised to reflect the new findings. Mr. McMahon then stepped down, with his daughter Stephanie McMahon being appointed as the CEO and chairwoman of the board. It's worth mentioning that although the WWE is a publicly traded company, Vince McMahon controlled it with a tight grip, owing to his Class B stock. Each Class B share had 10 times the voting power of the common Class A shares, which bestowed the McMahon family with 88% of the voting power. So technically, Vince could have chosen not to resign if it weren't for the media and board pressure. And we found out a few months later, in January of 2023, that he was not really into this retirement business. Those who know him say he is an intense micromanager, barely sleeps, rarely takes vacations, and who was expected to be in charge of the WWE until his death. He had planned his revenge and came back with a vengeance. The Wall Street Journal reported that McMahon was telling people around him that he had received bad advice to step aside, and that the controversy would have blown over. Never mind that more women came out in December of 2022 with fresh allegations. Based on multiple reports, McMahon engineered his return to the helm of the WWE by forcing out some board members, and replacing them with his own allies, who quickly voted him back in as the chairman. Rootlessly, his own daughter and heir, apparent, Steffi McMahon, was the first casualty. She resigned as chairwoman. Not to imply that there's any bad blood between the two, but it's clear that Vince was determined to personally take charge of the company for this next phase. 
His first step was to inform the SEC that negotiations over media rights required his direct participation and leadership. He said, quote, The only way for the WWE to fully capitalize on this opportunity is for me to return as the executive chairman and support the management team in the negotiations for her media rights. End quote. Current media agreements with Fox and NBC Universal for SmackDown, Monday Night Raw, and NXT all expire in 2024. However, unofficially, McMahon is said to have threatened the board that he would neither support nor approve any media deals unless he returned as chairman. Remember, 88% voting rights. Already, word was going around Wall Street that the main reason that he was returning was because he was looking for a buyer, and it was said that McMahon believed there was only a narrow window to kick off a sales process, owing to the urgent media rights negotiations. Some of the rumored interest buyers included Fox, Disney, Netflix, Amazon, and the Saudi Arabia Public Investment Fund, which has also made major moves in golf with their PGA Tour rival, LIV Golf. Liberty Media, the company that has quite literally transformed Formula One, was also believed to be in the running. Ultimately, Endeavor emerged victorious, owing to the similarities between their main properties, UFC and WWE, including the crossover of audience and talent. Wrestlers like Ronda Rousey and Brock Lesnar have competed in both, and Conor McGregor is taught to be headed that way too. While the UFC is a competitive sport, the WWE is a scripted, predetermined event where the product is the storytelling. Shocker kids, WWE isn't real. The athleticism involved, however, cannot be discounted. Nevertheless, both brands will benefit from the synergy, especially in administration, advertising, and scheduling. They expect the new company to save $50 million to $100 million annually by integrating operations in, among other things, office space. The merger deal was announced during WrestleMania 39, an event that brought in over $22 million in gay tickets and over $20 million in sponsorships, proving that the WWE is still a huge moneymaker. In fact, there are plans to monetize parts of its ring and barricades with ad placements, digital displays, and product placements, something more familiar in the UFC. Dana White will continue his role as head of the UFC, and Nick Khan doing the same at WWE. Vince McMahon will also remain as chairman of the board for two years, with a base salary of $1.2 million, bonuses of around $2.1 million, and stock grants worth $4.3 million per year. Headquartered in Beverly Hills, Endeavor, the company behind all of this, has many other properties in its portfolio. Most prominent is IMG, a massive sports, events, and talent management company with clients such as the UEFA Champions League, Premier League, Australian Open, taste festivals, and signed-on talents like Justin Timberlake and Millie Bobby Brown. At some point, they also owned the Miss Universe beauty pageant. Endeavor also owns IMG Academy, a 600-acre sports training and boarding school with 1,400 full-time students with an additional 15,000 athletes participating in camps throughout the year.